Hello guys and girls, you're listening to English Made Simple. This is episode number 74, numero 74. Welcome, welcome to today's episode of English Made Simple, episode number 74. Yay! How's it going everyone? Anyone watching the tennis, Australian Open? I stopped watching when Djokovic lost. Boo. <laughs> Damn it. Now I have to cheer for Nadal. My husband is quite happy about that. He wanted to see Djokovic lose. Whatever, you know what I'm saying. So I forgot to introduce myself. Excuse my manners. My name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. In today's episode, we are going to learn the difference between to borrow and to lend. I hear many English learners get confused with this one. I used to be confused myself when I was learning English back in the day. Do we say, can you borrow me your pen or can you lend me your pen? I think in Spanish we use one word when we lend or borrow stuff to and from your friends. In Spanish it is prestar. Before we go any further, I'd like to send a shout out to another raving fan of English Made Simple. Sergio de Santiago. <laughs> to send a shout out means to send a greeting. It's slang, modismo. We've learned this one before. You can use it with your friends. So I'm sending a shout out to Sergio from Chile. So Sergio had some great ideas for the show. Things like how to use English in a more practical way. For example, at a pharmacy, supermarket, train station, or even during uh, times when you are being asked by your relatives to pick up uh, their kids from school. <laughs> yep, I'm going to add it to my list. It's coming soon, so keep listening, amigo. I love hearing your comments, guys. I am glad to know you guys are learning something new in each and every episode of English Made Simple. It's good to know there are people out there listening. It definitely keeps me going. Awesome. Let's continue, chicos. Let's start off with a simple explanation of these verbs. To lend and to borrow. To lend is an irregular verb. It's spelled as L-E-N-D. The past tense is lent with a T. And participle lent. And borrow is spelled as B-O-R-R-O-W. It is a regular verb, past tense is borrowed, participle borrowed. Let me explain it to you in layman's terms, in a language that's easy to understand. In layman's terms is the expression we learned in the last episode. Go back to um, episode number 73 to remind yourselves of these expressions using lay and lie. Okie dokie, cool stuff. So... To lend means to give something temporarily with the intention of returning it in the near future. So in a couple of months or in a couple of days, basically you will give it back at some point. To borrow means to take something temporarily with the intention of returning it in the near future. To make a simple association, please remember these two key words. To lend is often associated with the verb to give. To borrow is often associated with the word to take. To lend is to give and to borrow is to take. Cool! Easy peasy Japanesey! Both of these can be used with a time marker for or in Spanish it's por. Time marker for, the word for, indicates the length of time the borrowed item is expected to be returned. Let me give you a quick and simple example to explain this. For example, hey Carlos, can I just borrow your pen for a couple of minutes? If I just say, hey Carlos, can I borrow your pen? Okay, it's not a biggie if I never return this pen to Carlos. The pen is not that expensive, so Carlos can live without the pen. So it's not such a serious situation, you can get away without using the time marker for. Now let's consider the following context. Hey Carlos, can I borrow $500? Can I borrow $500? Um, okay, maybe I need to know if you're going to return it. 
So it would be nice to know when you will return it. Because maybe Carlos can't live without his $500. He needs to pay his rent, for example. So a proper way to ask would be, Hey Carlos, can I borrow $500 for a month? I will return the money next month. Cool? Simple example. I hope you're following me so far, guys. Time to get serious, okay? As of recently, living in Australia has become really expensive. Buying a property in Australia can cost an arm and a leg, okay? It can cost an arm and a leg. Just means it's way too expensive for someone on an average salary to afford a house. You can't buy it with cash. So what people normally do is go to the bank and ask for a loan. A loan is a noun. It's the money you owe to someone, normally a financial institution, that you have to pay back with interest. So in the US, you can use this uh, word loan instead of lend. Okay. In the US, you could even say, hey, Carlos, can you loan me your pen instead of can you lend me your pen? For us who are used to the British way of speaking English, this phrase sounds unnatural and weird. But in the US, it's quite normal to use loan as a verb. You could say loan is a synonym for lend. And now I want to teach you some new vocabulary. Hope you're following me so far, guys. Now let's go back to the bank. Let me ask you this. How many of you have a personal loan? How many of you have a personal loan? A personal loan is a banking term. And in Spanish, that would be préstamo personal or, or un crédito de consumo. Well, I had to get a personal loan from the bank when I bought uh, my last car. I couldn't buy it with cash. I didn't have enough cash with me. I had to apply for a personal loan and then I had to pay it back with interest. Uh, cash, um, I didn't have cash. Cash is efectivo in Spanish. An interest rate is tasas de interés. Normally, when you borrow money from the bank, you pay it back at high interest rates. That's why I hate banks, hate greedy banks. Okay. <laughs> a high number of people in Australia have something called a mortgage. The fact is, the house prices are astronomically high. They're so high that the only way people can afford to buy their own property is to get a mortgage from the bank. A mortgage is a home loan, effectively. We pronounce it as mortgage. T is silent. Yes, there is a T in this word. <laughs> mortgage. M-O-R-T-G-A-G-E. Mortgage. T is silent. In Spanish, this is dividendo. Before they uh, give you money, before the bank gives you money, the bank will ask you if you own any assets. Assets are Bienes in Spanish. Assets could be a car or anything valuable that you own. The bank will take it in case you cannot repay your mortgage. When you pay your mortgage, you pay it back in installments over a period of time. The maximum term is 30 years at the moment. 30 years being stuck with a loan. Oh my God. Most of the time, when you borrow money from financial institutions, you pay it back in installments. New word, new phrase, in installments. Installments are cuotas or letras in Spanish. Okay. When I was living in Santiago, I was surprised that people pay for their groceries in installments. Groceries is the term used for items that you get from the supermarket. You go to a supermarket to shop for groceries. This includes food or any other home-related items. So yes, it was quite bizarre to see that you have to pay for your grocery bill in installments. I cannot understand this. I cannot fathom this. This is not how it should be. But uh, let's not get into politics right now, okay? We are here to learn some English, right? 
Right, let's sum up today's episode, guys. We are approaching the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was a bit different. So let's summarize. To borrow means to take and to lend means to give. You can only borrow something from someone. When you say lend me your pen, that's correct. If you say borrow me your pen, that's not correct. Same as if you'd say, give me a pen, that's correct. But take me a pen is wrong, okay? Oh, and don't forget to say the magic word, which is please. Can I borrow your pen, please, okay? I keep forgetting to be polite and uh, remind you guys to say please. <laughs> and that's about it, folks. Thank you for joining me in today's episode. And in the next short and sweet episode, we're going to learn some new expressions. We're going to learn some new expressions using the words lend and borrow, okay? It's going to be cool. Don't forget, transcriptions are available on my website, englishmadesimple.net. Hope you have an awesome week. You've been a great audience so far. Have a great week. And I'll catch you next time. Hasta la próxima. Bye.